Hello everyone, welcome back to Techie Pocket. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to run your own Minecraft server on a old um, Pentium 3 box. It's actually fairly simple and it can hold up to about five players. It can probably hold a few more, but after that it starts getting pretty glitchy. So let's go ahead and get right in back to Google Chrome. So first you're going to have to download the Build Tools GUI in the link down below. Simply click the download button and it should redirect you to here, just save it on your desktop. Okay, now that I got it, just go ahead and open it. Let me go ahead and switch to my desktop view. Okay, now after you got this open, all you gotta do is check this, make sure you have it up to date, click this to update build tools. This is where you choose the version of Minecraft you want to use and then go ahead and run the build tools. Now before you run it actually, you should make a folder here. So it doesn't really matter what way, which way you do it, just run the server and it'll make this folder right here. Now this folder is going to be the server, so after it's done with this you can go ahead and rename this to whatever you want your server to be called. Now this takes quite a while, it, uh, it will go faster if you have an SSD, but of course uh, most people have an HDD and so it's gonna take pretty long. I think it takes like half an hour But you don't have to worry about that because you're not gonna do that ever again. So I'll be right back when this is done Okay, it actually went fairly quickly in my computer. It took about seven minutes actually exactly seven minutes and When it's done, it'll just say success here saved spigot whatever This is how it'll look when it's done and the rest of this is just your log You can go ahead and clear that and close the build tools. Now remember to save this exe because he, every time you want to update your server you're going to have to build these uh, use this to build the build tools folder again to get your server so make sure you save that. You can go ahead and open this up now and this is your server now so what you should do is rename this to whatever you want your server to be called whatever it doesn't matter there we go Okay, so this is the server. Um, what are we gonna do here? Yeah, you're going to choose which one you want. If you want a spigot server, you run that. If you want a craft bucket server or a bucket server, you can run that. This, I have no idea what that is. I actually don't think that's for running anything, but I recommend a spigot server because it's fairly easy to use, and that's what I'm going to be showing you how to use today. So go ahead and open that. If if you have Java installed, it should open with Java. If you never opened a .jar before, it'll probably ask you what to open it with. Just go ahead and give it your Java location and open that up. If you don't know where Java is, just um, ask me down below, I'll tell you. I don't know, you, you should be able to find it yourself. Okay, so it should open up all this stuff now. You should see it expanded a little bit and nothing should open. That's good. If you click on this, nothing opens except some more files come. That means it worked. Now, how do you run it? You're gonna have to click on this, which will open up this, and this is just their license agreement for running a server. I recommend you go there and read it, and then when you're done, just highlight this and type in true, and then hit Control S, Alt F4, and oops, I changed the scene. Okay, there. So, yeah, it is set that to true, control S, and then you can close that out. Um, yeah, then, then the spigot thing, open that up one more time, and this time it should open now since you have it accepted. Okay, you should see some more files are coming up now, and it actually doesn't really show anything, so what I recommend you do is go into your task manager here, and in performance, or on, uh, on performance, you should see your CPU is up, your disks don't have to be doing that much, but your CPU should be working, and in your processes, you should be able to find Java right here is open. If As long as this Java is open, that means the Spigot Tools is open too. Unless, of course, you're running Minecraft, I do recommend you close all the other Java applications so that you know when this thing closes. And as you can see, this is using the CPU and a little bit of the disk, so that means it's working. And when when you see that thing disappear, that means it's done. Until then, just wait for all these files to keep coming up. Um, if, if it takes like all day and you see it's still not closed, I have found a few times where 
it finishes and I see no more files coming, but the Java thing stays open, then what you should do is just go into your task manager, click on the Java, and kill it. And then you can go ahead and do the next step. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and end the video here and come right back. Okay, now that your server is done posting all these files, go ahead and on your keyboard, start menu and R, type in notepad, hit enter, and paste this code from the description. This code is telling Java should open, set the max permission on the memory to be 300 megabytes, start it with 50 megabytes, open the jar file, spigot.jar, whatever. Go on to file, save that as run server or whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter, dot bat, that's the most important thing. Name it an all file, I mean save it as an all file inside your server file and save it. Now that'll put this file inside your server as a server runner. When you click that, it'll start loading the libraries of your server, which means it'll read your server and start it. This is the only way to start your server. And if you since you're going to be running this on your Pentium 3 box, this is the fastest way to run your server even. So, once this is done, this is where you control your server. You can OP people. This is this is everything. So, well, whoever you want to OP, this is your, how your server will be, and to stop it, just hit stop. Now, don't stop it now, because this is your server running, so to test it out, go ahead and open Minecraft. I'm going to have that right here. Click on Multiplayer, Add Server, and you're going to have to type in the IP address of your server. To find that, you're going to right-click here, open your Network and Sharing Center, click on Under Connections here, Click on the um, connection you're using to get to the internet. Click on details and your IPv4 address. That is the one. Now this address is only accessible to your local network though. If you want your, your people outside your local network to access to you, then what you should do is go to Google and type in what's my IP address, you'll then get your public IP address, which is a totally different thing. That is for people outside your network to connect to you. And to do that, you're going to have to also port forward your router, and I'm not going to be showing you how to do that in this tutorial. So there's your local IP address, go ahead and copy that, and type it in right here. Type in, I hit, I hit done. And should be connecting now. I'm just gonna make sure I type that in right. I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see here, it's right here, and um, it actually can't connect because I actually have this one here. This is the same one, so go ahead and double click on your server, and it'll start logging into your server, and that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, I actually have it set wrong, so that's all you gotta do to run your server. If you want to run a cracked server, that's very simple. All you gotta do is stop your server, Go into the server properties, which you should open with uh, Notepad. Of course, I'm I'm I code on this computer, so it's gonna open up with VS Code. Here it is. Just takes a little longer. Same thing basically. It's gonna open up here, and under online, you should find online mode true. This is what makes a cracked server. Simply type that in false, and it won't verify the name of your players and that's how you make a cracked server, so that's simple. Then you can go ahead and start your server again, and you're all done. Now, that's how you run it. Now what you gotta do to get on your Pentium 3 box? Well, all you gotta do is close this, put this inside there, take this, and send it to a, a, a uh, USB thumb drive. Send it to whatever, a hard drive, whatever. Send it somewhere, plug that into your Pentium 3 box, transfer it, and on your Pentium 3 box, just do the same thing. Open up this, and that'll run your server. Then what you gotta do is get the IP address of your server. You can't use the IP address of this computer. You gotta use the IP address of the 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 Pentium 3 box. Now on the Pentium 3 box, you're probably gonna be running XP. It's slightly different there, but you should be able to figure out. Just get your IP address there. Type it in here, and you're all done. So uh, next video, I'm going to be benchmarking it. I'm gonna be showing how much uh, lag you're gonna have. However, I'll only do that video if you guys request it. If you don't want that video, I'll probably not be doing it. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like it, dislike it, whatever. Subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.